Welcome to this powerful episode of Interviewing Jesus podcast, where we delve into the complex journey of waiting, faith, and the reality of spiritual promises. Together, we will explore the profound notion and bent, so to speak, that everything promised in Scripture often feels like it's meant for tomorrow. We know that God is faithful and His promises are true, but it frequently seems these promises are set for a future time. The belief that God hears our prayers and that any delays are attributed to God's will or God's timing can be both comforting and challenging. I'd like us to challenge that particular notion, lay what we think we believe as truth on the table, and speak with truth himself. Yet, amidst this turmoil, grace is the faithful steward of our hearts, and mercy assists us in our immaturity. As we reflect on the words written in moments of vulnerability, we gain a deeper understanding of the condition of our own hearts. This episode is an invitation to be transparently honest about our struggles, to recognize the relentless battles we face, and to find strength and hope in the grace that carries us through. Join me as we explore God's will and timing with authenticity and courage, shedding light on the challenging truths of faith and the powerful journey of waiting. I'll see you on the inside. Hello from the Pacific Northwest. This is Kristen from kristenwabag.com and you're listening to Interviewing Jesus Podcast. Answer me this. How does a Baptist farm girl from Oregon stumble upon the mystical nature of Christ, the love of God? If you're like me, Jesus has redefined what you used to say yes to. Join me and my guests on a mystical journey. But before we talk about the spiritual woo-woo, you need to know I am totally sold out to Jesus. It's amazing what the love of God reveals. Hello and welcome. I appreciate you spending this time with me, and I look forward to us laying out some special truths for us today. Let's jump right into our stimulating interview. Amen? This episode is dedicated to those moments of desperate frustration and profound questioning. When we're overwhelmed or feeling like an emotional basket case and the enemy spares no expense to hinder our journey. It can be a battle of epic proportions and the enemy knows the potential of the sword that you and I carry into battle and he will try everything to take us out or destroy our testimony leaving us in a state of brokenness or survival. Let's pray together. Father God, we agree that you are a good God, a good daddy. We agree that your promises are yes, yes, and amen. This is our capstone today. For just one day of intimacy with you is like a thousand days of joy rolled into one. I'd rather stand at the threshold in front of the gate, beautiful, 
ready to go in and worship my God than to live my life without you in the most beautiful palace of the wicked. For the Lord God, always brighter than the brilliance of the sunrise, you wrap yourself around me like a shield. You are so generous with your gifts of grace and glory. Those who walk along his path with integrity will never lack one thing they need, for he provides it all. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield, and the Lord bestows grace and favor and honor. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of heaven's armies, what euphoria fills those who forever trust in you. Psalms 84, 10 through 12, The Passion. Amen. What euphoria fills those who forever trust in you. (laughs) And that is what we're doing today. We're trusting him. We're trusting him with our conversation to know him. Amen. I understand that this is a vast set of questions. God's will, God's timing, God's promises. Today, we are challenging ourselves to open up our hearts in a new way. We lay down the text of secondhand knowledge and listen to truth, find experience. It is believed that the average person uses no more than 10% of his or her potential. 10%. We're not even scratching the surface of what we're capable of. We are all blessed with a continent of unexplored gifts and talents. Use them or lose them. 10%. I was reading through and picking up some of the notes in preparation for today's episode. And in chapter 3, The Lady in Waiting from the Unfinished Book, I shared a paragraph, and it was littered with the same questions that we are discussing today. Let me share that with you. In this Lady in Waiting season... Everything I read and heard and perceived in my mindset in Scripture, it was bent towards tomorrow. Promises were for tomorrow. God is faithful, but it will always be tomorrow. God always hears our prayers, but any delay was God's will or God's timing. Again, I was a lady in waiting. Everything in that season seemed promised was in the spirit or for another day or it's in heaven. And I was laying up treasures in heaven, right? Even marriage vows were polluted and given life promise until death do you part. Take a very emotionally needy mom of four young children, feeling bound by man's doctrine of the gospel that is supposed to set me free and put death in front of her as an escape? If we are transparent here and honest, it did knock on my door more than once. The enemy pulls no punches. He knows what you and I carry into battle. And he spares no expense to try anything to hinder us to take us out. Or how about destroying the testimony of family, which would leave me on cleanup and brokenness and survival mode for years. Grace indeed 
It stewarded my heart, and mercy was tremendously assisting my immaturity. I'm painting myself as an emotional basket case. And it's so interesting to read over your words that you felt that you lived. How you interpret that particular season. Hunger. (laughs) Hunger drives you and nothing can dampen promises in the thought of living for him in a in an arena of less than i'm going to say that again hunger drives you 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 know him you you're wanting to know him he's speaking with you and nothing can dampen promises in the thought of living for him in an arena of less than. I don't think so. There is no less than in living in the kingdom with my Jesus. Nope. No less than. I have some thoughts to share with you to lay on the table. I pondered whether I would give my answer or not. I'm still a little bit undecided, but I think I'll share my opinion. But I will try to give enough pause so that you can question your own mindset, your own belief. Does God's will mean waiting? Here is a collection of Google AI gathered responses. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by AI? Artificial intelligence. And where does it gather its supposed intelligence? You know, when you sit down and do a Google search and the AI just kicks in and gives you a collection of its answers. Where does it get its supposed intelligence? the internet. And who has filled the internet with stories and blogs and podcasts and opinions? I think you get it. Mm -hmm. Does God's will mean waiting? Let's hear the answers. And when I give you these responses, this is what was collected. Is this the overflow thought of the body of Christ? Let's see. Here is the statements. God's timing is perfect. God has a bird's eye view and his timing is perfect even if delays can feel agonizing. Do you agree? I disagreed. Time is in creation in which we are to be subduers, have dominion. God's timing or calendar is above the feeling of agonizing. Those are two separate points here. God's timing is perfect as heaven and earth move in concert with his faith. God is with you. God is the Lord of waiting and is with you in your wait. Do you agree? Is God the Lord of waiting? I disagreed. And here is the worst answer in the collection I found. To qualify for the promise of God, God is eager and willing to give his children every good thing, but it is up to us to qualify for the promise. Heaven help us. We are saved by grace. Next one. God's delays are not denials. 
God does something in you before he does something for you. I I heard you. All right, I'll say it again. God's delays are not denials. God does something in you before he does something for you. I agree in part. What do you think? This is what I shared. God never uses sickness or disease as a tool to maturity. Next one. God's will is strategic. Nothing God calls us to do is without a purpose. That's an easy one. I agree. (laughs) God's will is for you to wait well until you know God's specific will for your circumstances. His will is for you to wait well. I'm going to say that again. Why do I say these again? Because I can, I can feel as if mindsets are the weights and measures of our thinking, of, of how we know him, are moving. Mm-hmm. God's will is for you to wait well. Until you know God's specific will for your circumstances. His will is for you to wait well. Do you agree? I disagreed. Patience is a virtue. He is maturing the sons and daughters of God. Amen. But God's answers are not withheld as a means to know him. That is control. God loves you. God loves you and gives you good guidance, provision, help, and strength during the wait. Another easy one. I agree. (laughs) Are you thinking? Wonderful. God's will is to lift you above storms. God will take you through the storm and he will actually lift you above the storm. Yes, we both agree. Mm -hmm. And, And that's the reason why we're here. We're here because we want to walk on top of the storms. Amen? God's will is to develop your character. God is developing your character and making you into the image of Christ. Another easy one, we agree. (laughs) God's will is to break through. When people patiently and expectantly wait on God, suddenly God breaks through. All right, let's hear this again. God's will is to break through. When people patiently and expectantly wait on God, suddenly God breaks through. Do you agree? I agree in part. But here's my question. And who is doing the breakthrough? (laughs) I got you thinking on that one. (laughs) Okay, enough questions or statements. I'll share with you a very dear story of mine written in the unfinished book. And I'd call this God's timing. Yes, this is who you and I know as this is God. And the cool thing... (laughs) He does it with us. Amen. (laughs) I titled it, and it came to pass. 
Holy Spirit and I were enjoying discovering each other. Renewal days, though I was outside of the hub, a full-time mom with one baby boy in diapers, another in pull-ups, and the two oldest running full steam ahead on our small farm. Don wasn't an expert in this Holy Spirit stuff either, and I made him roll his eyes more than one time or two. Yep, he'd just roll his eyes at me. The story begins with me getting dinner on the table for the Wombat clan. Don had just arrived home from a tiring day at the shop. I've had another off the charts encounter. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and I was bursting to share about the crazy, like I was really their dream. A good friend of ours from church bravely joined us at our active and boisterous meal. <laughs> you know how quiet the room gets when their mouths are full. It's a good time to talk. <laughs> it is a perfect time to burst open the daily secrets revealed from Jesus' heart. I shared last night's happenings to the lifelike vision. It was so real. I shared the Lord showed me a little girl crossing the street after school. She stepped out onto a busy afternoon street, not using the crosswalk, and a white car collided with her, leaving her unconscious under its bumper. I saw myself witnessing the accident, jumping out of my car and running over and laying hands on her and praying for her recovery, and she lived. The dream hit deaf ears mm -hmm. and rolling eyes when I shared it. And like so many other happenings, I began to bottle up even the desire to share those experiences, though I was desperate to share, desperate for community. Guess what? <laughs> I said I called this God's hero timing. Three months later to the date after the vision, I had just picked up my two big boys from school. We were rounding the block, heading to visit Dad at the shop, and it happened. The girl was hit just like in my dream. I instructed my boys to stay in the car. I leaped out, my heart was pounding, and I laid hands on her unconscious body. People were yelling and calling for help. I didn't leave, praying loudly without fear or the thought of my surroundings. It began to pour what you might say as raining cats and dogs. I remained constant. My hands were laid on her. The car was there. People was there. I remained constant until she regained consciousness. The paramedics arrived and took her to the hospital. I am left drenched. My body was quivering from his power. I began to notice a few glaring eyes through my tears mixed with rain. And it came to pass. And it, and it came to pass. God's timing. But we are with him and we're in the life story. One of my very favorite quotes from a book. Mm -hmm. I keep the book right here close because I pick it up and I read bits and pieces of it all the time. 
there's three valuable points for us to ponder. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. Sun to the art of war. I have read that quote more than any quote. It gets me every time. It motivates me every time. It gets me to dig my teeth in and ask myself questions, to ask the Lord questions. Let's break that out. Do you know the enemy? And how he would try to discourage or deceive you from knowing God's will and timing on your behalf? Do you, do you really know? Do you know yourself? What and why you believe what you believe about who God is and how he cares for his children? Do you know yourself? Do you only know yourself and you haven't considered negative influences around you? You haven't taken the time to ask God personally, what is your identity in him and how are you to govern the influences in your life? I'd like to share a quick perspective regarding spiritual warfare. I dismiss the enemy all the time, but I do not argue with him. Mm -hmm. I dismiss the enemy all the time, but I do not argue with him. I got you thinking. <laughs> I love it. Yay. Here is but one glorious answer. Just one. This is one glory, glorious answer to our pondering today. Our pondering today about God's timing and God's will. Delay God's promises tomorrow. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He did it once and for all, long before anyone but God believed it. Long before anyone, before you and I were even here to believe it, God believed it. And without our permission. He rescued us from the dominion of darkness, the sense-ruled world dominated by the law of performance. And he relocated you and I into the kingdom where the love of his sons rules. Hoo-hoo! Darkness is not a force. It is the absence of light. Yep, I'll say that again. He rescued us from the dominion of darkness, the sense-ruled world dominated by the law of performance. And he relocated us into the kingdom where the love of his sons rules. Darkness is not a force. It is an absence of light. A darkened understanding veiled the truth of our redeemed design from us. What empowered darkness was the lie that we believed about ourselves. Thus, 
I was confused about who I am until that day I heard and I understood the grace of God in truth as in a mirror. We were confused about who we were until that day each one of us heard and we understood the grace of God in his truth as in a mirror. We saw ourselves. And in God's mind, mankind, all of us, that's mankind, is associated in Christ, all of us. Mankind is associated in Christ, in his blood sacrifice. We, all of us, were ransomed. Our redemption was secured. Our sins were completely done away with. Gone, done, washed away, gone, can't be found. There isn't an iota of waiting or for time to come due in any of that. Sin, sickness, death, and decay are dismissed. Sin is to live out of context with the blueprint of one's design to behave out of tune with God's original harmony. Colossians 1 13. Not gorgeous. Sin is to live out of context with the blueprint of one's design, to behave out of tune with God's original harmony. May I release a point of grace. For those of us who are walking daily and believing that God is their absolute healer. Grace, we release breakthrough. Satan, you are dismissed. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we choose to live in all three in the oneness of now. Amen? <laughs> and that is what we have interviewed today. What tune is playing in our head? And is that tune in the context of our blueprint and design. What goes round and round in your thoughts? How is truth defined? Or is today the day to shake it up a bit? Father, forgive us for not knowing you as you desire to be known. I'm going to say that again. Oh. Father, forgive us for not knowing you as you desire to be known. Did you feel it shift right there? As you desire for us to know you. Father, bring the tuning harp of Jesus Christ and return us to the sound, frequency, and song of our harmony and oneness in him. I got to this point of my thoughts and jotting down my notes. And this particular song just rose to the surface. Will you sing it with me? Oh, to Jesus I surrender. All to thee I freely give. I will ever love and trust you and in your presence 
daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I Dearest family, mm, don't you just love his presence? Don't you just love his goodness? Thank you, Jesus, for sitting here and looking us in the eye and redefining truth. Thank you, God, for touching us. (laughs) I thoroughly believe that many of us received that grace breakthrough. Amen. That grace breakthrough of your goodness and your love that is always right there for us to feel, to participate in, to hear, to respond to, to sit in. God, you are good. Thank you for spending this time with me. Just stay in this place, in his presence. I love you. (laughs) My goodness, he's been just drawing us into the deeper things. God, thank you for our dreams, our visions. Thank you when we, we put our head down on the pillow that you're constantly confirming that which you speak to our hearts in. Thank you that we experience you in the heavenly realms and we walk those realms out day in and day out in your love and your kindness and your goodness. Make sure you pop over to the show notes so you can see those statements, those questions again, and ask him, what do you believe? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Does God's will or his timing mean waiting? What is that word, waiting? talk to you again next week. Bye now.